Hi everyone, this is Sly47 here with another kind of discussion video that I did previously like with the Blitz Pass, but kind of wanted to do a review of the game. Kind of a little change it up with, uh, instead of just putting up clips and gameplay, stuff like that. This is a 6,000 game review of where I'm at. I'm just below 6,000. Was supposed to be 5,000. Uh, got busy. So, 6,000 now. <laughs> As you see here, we got the Cleveland here. Great solid ship for tier 8. Uh, and as you can tell really off the bat with the review this actually is a pretty good looking mobile game so let's get into it kind of for the people let's start off with the people who don't have a clue what this game is and what it's about this game is a ship based combat game that's between a six to seven minute game depending on which tier you're at from one to ten in the grind uh obviously you can play it a lot you can play it a little it's kind of a mixture of both uh I've seen players who I see them on every now and then, and I see people who I'm constantly playing with because they're always on. The slower gameplay for mobile actually really works in this sense. You're not having to frantically trying to hit a button like in Call of Duty Mobile or something like that. It just it's you know, it just works for this. And compared to PC, this is a much faster game because you're within about a minute you're engaging enemies compared to that game where a lot of time you might not see an enemy for four or five minutes. So if you're you played the PC version, it's a little too slow for you, definitely try this game out. It might be more for you in terms of the gameplay feel, the, the pacing and everything like that. Is it worth playing, in my opinion, just kind of a TLDR? Yes, this is a very, you don't have to put, put much into it. Uh, of course, you can put uh, plenty of time in, plenty of money into this game. It is a mobile game. It is made for whales. Uh, whether we like it or not, it's going to be. The overall consensus, the feel of the game, it's very rewarding. It is also very kind of, it's, it's easy to play. Uh, and from PC, uh, you'll kind of understand this. everyone has a heal. So you, you have that ability to learn in your games is you I think, I think it's around like 40 to 50 percent of your health can be healed back within about two minutes of time within the game that allows you go forward you get crushed for a little bit you fall back you heal up you can come back in and even save the game and win i've done that plenty of time with certain ships and that is just how it is and I, I really do like that style it allows people to learn it allows a lot of the higher tiers to have people who generally know what they're doing you're not having to worry about people being completely idiots at, at that tier they'll generally be able to do stuff to kind of go over the pros uh this game is in constant development you basically have ships coming in uh especially premium ships they gotta make money uh about every week you have the ability to of course there's certain uh missions now that they used to be basically you get the ship for free but now you're more or less getting the ship for a heavy discount so it, which to me actually kind of pays it kind of works out i, I like that uh, i think that makes a lot more sense in the business end and it it plays to that gambling aspect that a lot of the time those crates you know those missions are for so i don't love it i wish they could go back to the free model but i also understand it from that from being a mobile development background uh, about one new tree happens a quarter. So yeah, as you can see, basically every, you know, we're about to get the Russian BBs. Uh, previously we just got the Darings. They're, they're pumping them out. I feel like a little bit faster right now about every other month. We're starting to kind of get the taste of what the next tree is going to be like via, uh, Blitz Passes, which actually, if you look at the Blitz Pass this month, it was the, the Perth, this, once again, another Blitz Pass, right? Uh, another season pass for stuff, and this happens every month. Uh, this month it was for the Perth, uh, that solid ship, but occasionally you'll have one where they'll put the, the tier three and tier five in here, so that you, that way you can kind of get an early access and get some grinding on to be able to get to tier six early. It's hit or miss. I, I don't mind it, but at the same time, no big deal. Uh, there's a lot of uh, grindable ships for free for resources. So you basically have missions that you can do for certain ships and get copper, steel, or titanium, depending on the ship, just by playing the game. And then, of course, you can go into the shipyard and be able to unlock. There's more ships in here, like the Kronstadt and the Argonport right now, and the rotation's happening in January of 2011, or 2020, not 2011. <laughs> and uh, basically you're able to get ships for free 
uh, with these resources that you slowly grind up, uh, especially if you play a lot and you get uh, to Legend, which I'm actually just about to be, which is basically your C your monthly ranking, you can get Copper and you get a little bit of Steel and Titanium every month. So eventually you're basically going to get it unlocked via just playing. That's awesome. And I, I kind of wish more ships, more of the older premiums would go into that model just so that it kind of cycles through the premiums of what's available, makes it a little easier to sometimes get those premiums that you're always wanted, like a, a late day or, day or something like that, that I've, I've kind of wanted. I know it sucks, but whatever. It's fun. The balance of the game, generally solid. You're more or less dealing with ships that are, you're gonna, you're like, they need some love. You're not really dealing with OP ships at certain tiers. I know some people will argue about the Roma. I like that and kind of go over uh, the Roma right here. Uh, it is an incredibly tanky ship. Its guns hit like fucking truck. And like that, it is damn good. Uh, same thing with the Richelieu. I have both, and like that, acquired Roma for free. Richelieu for, I paid through it. Uh, both of these are solid ships. But it's not like the Turpets it, or the Black Amagi or even the Maya or the Takao or the Cleveland can't challenge it in a way. So you're never feeling like it's a bad, you know, you're, you're never leaving a game without actually doing some damage. And like that, if you're if you're a pretty half decent player, there is single tier matchmaking, which straight up wins this game. You should try it if you hate the, the two tier matchmaking at, at PC. Oh my God, it is so nice that you never have to deal with a tier eight versus a Yamato. You're, you're good. Well, of course, I'm Sashi there, but whatever. <laughs> All ships have three heroes. I've already mentioned this. It, it's a phenomenal balance to this game. Uh, there is a premium version of the consumables that you have, and you actually just acquire them out of just random, pretty much. So sometimes you just have enough to use. It, it's not a big issue. So as much as these give you a little bit more heal and, uh, and restore a little bit faster, not a big problem. I, I, I think that's pretty well balanced if you can get them for free uh, to use on trips that you partic particularly want. In this game, XP is actually the probably the easiest resource to grind. Uh, you have boosters here that basically you can see this is just from playing, grinding, and uh, buying stuff from in-game uh, with in-game currency, not actually with uh, money or monetized currency that you can just acquire through various means and you just, you get them. So you can quickly boost up your ship XP by 50% or even 250% and really rip through a grind in a matter of no time. It's not a big problem. The other thing is, is that you're not really buying parts for your ship, you're buying blueprints. So to kind of go over these, you can see basically, uh, let me find a ship that actually I need. Uh, there we go, Ernest Gate. I actually got the ship for free out of a, a box, which I'll go over soon. But as you can tell here, we can upgrade this ship with blueprints of different kinds and you acquire them, of course, over time. Not a hard deal, but I will say that there are times when these are your hardest things. Like credits, you can get, they're kind of the second hardest resource to acquire uh, uh, after XP. Then it's blueprints. If you can stockpile blueprints, do so. And to stockpile blueprints for the new players, hit these ads three times a day. And like that, it's, they're, they're, you know, they're for free. And like that, you get three boxes every day. And then of course, whenever you're playing on top of that, you get five of them, uh, five extra a day from just playing right here. So, or actually four, sorry, four. Pretty easy to acquire them over time as you, of course, I have 88. I'm not really grinding anything right now. I'm not trying to, so I've, I'm just trying to build back my stock of them. The, with the balance of the actual gameplay of fighting everyone, uh, Citadels feel strong sometimes feel like almost they should be a little stronger, but at the same time, they're very well balanced. You're not getting half your health removed by a shot. You're getting a light smack every now and then from a Citadel, and they are kind of RNG, so don't, like, you know, you can place them in areas that will increase that RNG, but you're not going to just instantly get them when you hit underneath a turret or something. So understand that. Uh, it, it, I think the RNG could be a little lessened, but at the same time, I think that they're in a really good spot. You're not really hating yourself for accidentally showing your broadside. It will still hurt, but you're pretty good. 
radar in this game compared to PC uh, and uh, sonar in this game, which actually if you look at tier 10s and like that, there's basically one or two ships that have radar. Uh, it's powerful, but it's not there enough to shut down the meta that is the DD meta right now with Shimmas. So what I believe is we need more ships with it. The pretty much, you know, for being a cruiser main, we're, cruiser mains are rare. You're not really running into a lot of cruisers. You're running into a lot more battleships and a lot more DDs. But luckily, because you're a cruiser main, you now get to either feed on battleships with fire or you get to feed on DDs. Like with the Minotaur, that thing just, I've been having so many insane games with that. Especially when they're like, hey, by the way, we're going to have five DDs in a game and I pop in the Minotaur and I'm like, and this is <laughs> right place, right time. Uh, and actually, I've got a few videos up, uh, up on that. Monetization, uh, really, it's actually pretty solid I, for the for premium time, specifically for the premium account subscriptions. This is actually your best way of getting gold, uh, getting credits, because, of course, it gives you a, a nice little bit of credits. Uh, of course, extra credits in game, extra XP in game and also extra free XP. Uh, I used to have this on here, but basically I gained a bunch of extra premium days because you just do in the game and it, it adds up and I'm just basically saving 10 bucks or 12 bucks uh, for this month. I enjoy it. I think that's kind of the best way to do it and you get three, uh, 3,600 gold every month. Pretty solid deal. Not a bad one. Uh, the problem here with the game is these. <laughs> this is a mobile game so you got all of the lovely RNG that you've always ever wanted in any game that you never wanted it in. So they do not include build most of the time. There are very few times that you get a crate and a bundle and that's that's a problem. That it, I really want them to put a bundle in there. I know it's going to be an expensive bundle but it's like hey if I want that ship I don't want to be putting that all through. And to kind of give an idea, this is 2,500 gold right here for one roll. So that's about 10 bucks or around, actually more around eight bucks a roll for a 4% chance to get it. It doesn't make sense. And even it, on this one, it's even 0.63 on the cheaper one. So it doesn't make sense to do that. Uh, these two ones, these, uh, these uh, actually these, these are called uh, heavy and medium crates. These are just basically premiums that actually you can just acquire in other ways so don't don't always worry about this and also you commonly will acquire these crate keys via the blitz pass and via other things pretty plain and simple don't worry about these and on top of that there's actually missions that you can get and the top mission crate i'm actually at i literally can get a free tier five six premium from it from just playing and this happens, I'd say, if you're playing uh, vigilantly and you're getting your missions done every day and you're getting your weeklies done every week, you're probably popping this crate once a month, if not once every other month. So it's incredibly good. From there, monetization, uh, Blitz Pass. Uh, from my old video, it's actually updated and changed uh, how it all works. Uh, basically, it's $10 for the base Blitz Pass and then $25 to immediately get the camo for the ship and so much more. Uh, I actually do a uh, massive chart on Google Drive and I basically post up the results of the differences from every month. And yes, the rewards have gone down continuously, but for 10 bucks nowadays, actually the, the, still the Blitz Pass is worth it if you need the items within it. Uh, do not go for the Blitz Pass for this advanced crate. This is, this is a extra, extra bonus. It's great if it happens. It doesn't need to happen. Uh, that because it, uh, this number actually constantly increases on how much you have to do per each level. And I've, I think I've gotten one copper out of this. Everything has been credits and XP. It, it, it obviously, it's all luck at that point. So who knows? Uh, but at the same time, I, I think the it's, it's generally good if you want the ship. So just can't think of it like that. Grinding in this game, I've kind of talked about boosters. You can make it very quick. Blueprints, you're going to need it. Uh, you never have to grind an incomplete ship. So you're never going to feel like you're completely under underwhelming or you've got the wrong parts or something like that. 
uh, equipment generally you want to put it on because there's a lot of bonuses to these equipments that you want to do and at tier 10 of course you have legendary equipment and stuff like that the it, you're generally going to want to put that in that's why it's like credits you'll actually generally you'll spend a lot of because you're going to be putting that equipment immediately on you're going to be putting the supplies on which kind of gives these little bonuses here and there of surface detection reload time warp, hit points ship speed uh, that no big deal it's it you know they're small uh with the grinding uh basically you get uh you can get four wins they are 400 percent games a day so pretty much you can play and grind out four four wins and get the max amount of xp you're gonna get plus when you finish a game you actually get an option of doing a 50 percent boost to it so if you have a really good game, you literally just, you, you know, 3000 XP game. Now you're clocking another 1500 XP by watching another ad. Pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Uh, the next part that I would highly suggest is, and if I can choose the right thing, uh, is the fleet. Is join a fleet immediately because right here, basically you can tell you get minor upgrades. But the main thing is, is like you get bonus silver, bonus XP. You get access to a fleet shop that occasionally can have bonuses like a super XP booster right here. It's incredibly important. On top of that, you actually have these fleet challenges that you can work together towards and get little bonuses here and there. And then at the end of every week, you have a chance of getting a ship, a variety of different rewards. A lot of time it's not a ship, it's just camo or something, but it helps it will help so definitely join that battle honors for every single ship uh you're you're able to access copper and steel mostly from this uh you're just gonna unlock these over time and that just gives you another reason to hey focus on the objective actually go into that capture zone because a lot of people are allergic to it no big deal uh, I've already talked about free uh, free ships from boxes, so there's a lot of tier 5, 6 premiums. I just wouldn't buy because you're just going to unlock them over time. If you happen to get them from, let's say, a free uh, medium crate or a heavy crate key, awesome. In reality, you're, you're going to acquire all the 5, 6s over time. I, you know, If you look at how many uh, tier 5 premiums I have, there's a lot of them. Same thing with tier 6. You just, you just acquire them over time. And that's a really easy and really great uh, incentive to keep on playing. It makes it a lot of fun because tier five, six, seven are really fun tiers. So there is one thing I would like to change at tier uh, nine and 10 with the battle honors. I would love a, a tier six like mega mission, like win the game, kill two ships and do 100,000 damage or something like something nuts. Uh, and give us titanium because right now there is it's very hard to acquire titanium specifically and these are for Musashi, Siegfried, uh, Jean Bart and a few other ones else you basically have to buy crates and that of course is RNG of whether or not you get some or not so it, yeah it's not exactly fun. Uh, the cons of, of some of the other things that you might run into, there is some teleporting issues every now and then. Uh, it's basically with connection issues. Uh, invisible walls, we have run into that one in the last two updates. I don't know what's going on with that one, but occasionally you just kind of run into a wall and you're like, I, <laughs> let me back up and turn. <laughs> I, um, one uh, for the new players, if someone's AFK, don't shoot torpedoes. Don't, don't shoot torpedoes at them. And like that they will just go right through just shoot them don't waste your torpedoes on them uh you will run into crashes in this game i think they maybe happen to me once every three four days and a lot of the time it's on the start of the game or at the end of the game you're not crashing in the middle which is i think that's perfectly fine sometimes that lose you know that makes it so you lose out on the 50 percent boost of that game which I still think they should fix that as well, that you should be able to go back to your last game and always do that 50% boost. But yeah, that's that's small minor things. For the PC players, you know carriers are kind of broken and they're kind of fun. Uh, they're actually still the RTS mode in here. So if you run into a good carrier player, uh, you can do nothing. Even if you're in a Worcester or Des Moines, you can do nothing because there is no there is no dodging it you're dead and that's 
the the problem with carriers in this game is it's a high skill cap so when you have a skill cap you literally have this situation of if you weaken it then the mediocre players will just suck even more and the good players are just still going to be that good even if you try to nerf it so carriers are in a, a very hard predicament of balance and personally i think it just should be a general aa in certain areas if you've got multiple like if you've got a worcester right next to a richie and stuff like that it should be a no-go area you know it we we need to basically be able to sail in a fleet and cause sections of the air of the map to be the the, the, the planes aren't getting it or something along that lines but that's even contentious. I know some carrier players that would be so pissed if they did that. Uh, premiums in this game with the balance are actually pretty good. Uh, they are tend to be stronger, but there's a few ships. Uh, like I can tell you, I can tell you the Lenin. Uh, luckily, I got that ship for uh, free when the missions were still going. It is. It's not as good as the tier eight ships and uh, like in the premium line or in the regular lines, but the Richie and the uh, Roma, they're definitely the top of the tier. They are not overpowered, but they are definitely strong. And in the right hands, they could be perceived as overpowered. So just understand that. Uh, that is kind of really hard uh, sometimes to feel, but at the same time, I feel like the balance is actually fairly good. And I just think they need to, once again, balance of the game is certain ships need love, not certain ships need buffs. I think there's a very good balance with the good ships and there's a piss poor balance with the ships that need the love. Uh, let's see. Blueprints, of course, you're always going to need those for monetization. Uh, kind of the 60 bucks for a mobile game. It's kind of hard at the exact same time. I do believe in the philosophy of a dollar per hour of entertainment. If you're going to entertain me for 60 hours, then yeah, 60 hours into a game is no big issue. And I have put plenty of money in this game completely honest with that uh, trust me there's there's plenty of ships i you can probably tell i've purchased and and or gotten for free and i've put my time in there was a hundred dollar tier nine ship once in a bundle i think that the second time that that ship came back in was around like 75 for a tier nine with its camel i thought that was actually pretty good i i, I thought that was a reasonable amount for their monetization scheme even though i believe that basically they should take 15 to 20 percent off basically everything and that should be the new minimum that should be the new or the new average and that would really make this game actually pretty good the gambling <sighs> the gambling sucks yeah it's a mobile game what else do you expect if you want to get into it you can if you don't then you don't have to which is great uh i just wish that they brought in more bundles with those gambling uh, mechanics or maybe even put a barrier be like hey we're having a week of gambling and then here's the bundle after a week for a, a decent price like you know let's say 10 rolls or something like that so that's still a lot of money but at the same time you at least get the ship that you want to play overall this game it's sick you know once again i'm at six thousand games or nearly six thousand games five thousand eight hundred ninety one this is a fun game it's incredibly easy if you're in between meetings if you're just kind of like just sitting around at a doctor's office and you know it's going to be another 10 minutes or something like that or even six minutes you have time for a game quickly jump in jump on and play you can't beat that it is a fun way to do it and it's very rewarding very easy to do you learn quickly because you have the ability to learn in this game with those heals so Highly suggest trying it out. Uh, it can be free to play. Uh, personally, I think the if you if you want a little bit of a boost, I think premium is probably the best option for you. Be like it's twelve bucks, and you'll put in you'll put in that twelve hours in order to play this game very easily in a month, and it's it's fun. It's simple as that. You can just grab your phone, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. So uh, it does have its issues. I still think it's better than PC because of that single tier matchmaking and healing alone. Those two just straight up make this game better, in my opinion. I wish that we could have literally Blitz with PC graphics. It would be nuts. And I think that it would generally beat out the, P the general PC game because the general PC game is just 
it's so massive it's so mature and the, the gameplay you know i don't want to waste five minutes of my time driving around a map hoping that i don't get one shot from someone across the other side of the map we're here yeah i get hit it might hurt but i can heal i can get out i can i can i can hide up no big worry so kind of with all that information how do you guys like the game like if you're if you're a current player what do you think of the game what's your ideas what's your problems with it what's your pros with it what do you think could be better in this game i think there's a lot of interesting small ideas that could actually make this game just that much better and just that much more rewarding without actually hampering their ability to make money or hampering anyone else a part of the, the fun of the game really so how many games do you got let us know down in the comments down below hope you guys liked the video kind of want to change it up and try something different uh this time and uh hope you enjoyed it see ya